Y'all got a little bit too much turkey, a little bit too much dressing, and, and there's not, not enough praise. In it. But Thanksgiving is all about giving God a thanks, right? I'm ready, ready to give God some praise.
place now in the sanctuary. This is what the Bible says. Come on, it's a Hebrew word. A lifting hands. It's the ultimate and the universal sign of surrender. Lord, we surrender to you. We surrender life, church, to you, Lord. We surrender our own lives to you, God. We surrender this time to you, Lord. We ask that you pray in
so long that you don't know what overflow feels like. I just invite you to try it this morning. After you try overflow, after you try God, it's more than enough.
a hard season. And we think, God, where are you? Where are you as the winds rage around us? And you know what? As the clouds begin to gather and they begin to get dark, we think it's going to overwhelm us. And God says, no, I'm about to open up and lay my spirit and lay my blessing upon the worship with us. We're going to sing a little bit of a new song today. We'll try it out on y'all. It's all right. When you get the song, we want you to sing it with us.
just in financial kind of ways, but in physical, relational, spiritual, and all manner of blessings. How many believe you've got everything that you need? Look at you and say, I got everything I need. And I'm gonna plant a seed today. Look at things out, plant a seed. I hope you got a good seed here today. I'm gonna invite you to lift your gift before the Lord Father right now. We bless the offering, we bless the tithe, the 10%. We know God that whatever we give to you is never lost, is deposited into a heavenly account, and anytime we need it, we can make a withdrawal. Anytime we need it, Lord, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ATM in the heavenly realm. And God, right now, I ask in Jesus' name that everyone that's given today, that they never miss their gift, but God, that you bring it back on every way, that you bring it back to them, Lord, in every kind of way. Supply their needs. Don't let their bills just be paid off, but let their bills be paid off in Jesus' name. Break the yoke of debt today in the name of Jesus. And cause the bills to be paid, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Come on, rejoice as you get today. again, the Spirit of the Lord came to me in such a sweet way this morning, yeah. around about 3.45. It's just Saturdays. It's just Sunday mornings early that I wake up. He lets me sleep all night, every day, except from Saturday to Sunday. <laughs> but this is why he does it. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. In the weeks and the months coming ahead, we're going to be really delving into Christian maturity. But the founding formation stone of Christian maturity is, just know this, it's not about you. The foundation of Christian maturity is understanding it's about somebody else. It's about somebody else. Now look, the Lord would have done everything he would have, everything he did, he would have done just for Tammy Sinclair. Just for you. But it's not just about you. And so when you begin to mature, you understand that God does things and he, he, he wakes me up at 345 not to, not to hinder my sleep and not even to give me a word that pumps me up and makes me seem like the 
man of God. It's all about you. Amen. He wakes me up for y'all. That's how much he cares. Amen. 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 It's how much I care. I'm willing to, to get up and lay there and pray for a little while. Amen. And I did. And at one point, I, I know some of y'all will know what I'm talking about. I was laying on my side, as I typically do. And the Spirit of the Lord hit the top of my head and just came this, down the side of my body. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> just like the Lord came and said, all right, I've kept you up for a little while. I'm going to put a little night mic down on top of it. <laughs> Growing up, people used to fall out in the Spirit a lot. Aren't you? We don't do that a whole lot here. But we, we, we almost from the pump. We, we'd have catchers because we don't want people cracking their head on the altar. <laughs> So people fall out, and we had the, what we call joy killer claws. That's what the boy, that's what the boys call them, because you know, cover up the la ladies' legs. Right. We call them joy killer claws, and so the ladies would fall out, and they get the joy killer cloth and cover the ladies' legs. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I told that, but it's it's the truth. Yes. <laughs> joy killers. When we first started this church, somebody made me some joy killer cloth. We just put them in the back room. Huh? I, I believe in falling out. I believe in rolling the floor. I believe in running the aisles. I believe in dancing on the seats. I believe in chunking songbooks. I believe in all of it. Jerking, running, hollering. I believe in it. <laughs> but, but if you're going to fall down, you better be in the spirit. Because this floor is concrete. <laughs> somebody say amen. And we don't, I won't allow a minister to come in here and try to knock you down. I don't want to get for that. I got off where I'm going. I, I'm, I'm telling you, the Lord laid a little joy killer cloth down on top of me, just like I was out in the spirit. And it makes me know today, today, maybe past other days, is I have a word from God for you. I have a word from God. You turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to begin reading at verse 4. 28. We're still in the theme of the very elect. We're still in election month. Evidently, we're still electing. But, regardless of however or whatever happens with that, we need to understand that we are the elect. That God went into the voting booth and voted for Brock. He voted for Opal. He voted for you to be heirs of salvation. Look at somebody say, he voted for me. So I'm the very elect. Now, again, Christian maturity says it's not all about me. It's not about my ego. It's not, it's not to make me feel special that God picked me. It's all about somebody else. And God didn't elect you for you to be derelict in your duty. We got a whole lot of people that are elected that don't do anything. And that's another story. I won't even. We just leave that leg. <laughs> They're elected and they go and they don't do anything. They just play games. But that's not how it is for the house of God and the people of God. God elected you to do something. Amen. And he elected you to rule and to reign. Now we elect officials to be our governors, our officials, the people that have authority over our government, right? And authority over the, the citizens. Yes. Am I right? Yes. God elected you to rule and reign from a higher realm. Over principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And he didn't punch the buzzer for you, for you to be derelict in your duty and not rule from a high place. So look at your neighbor and say, I am going to put on my crown. And I'm going to reign. All right, so we're talking today about ruling from a higher realm. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter. You can stand if you want to. It's not too lengthy of a reading. How many appreciate Brother Kendricks? Yeah. If you're joining me at home, I've got many, many people that are still out. I want to tell you, don't allow your soul to become weakened through lack of fellowship. So come on, share this video, put your name on there, say I'm watching. Put a like and a love every time I say something that you want to amen. Put a like button. Participate in this. Because when you get separated and cordoned off, you become weaker. It's like not going to the gym. Next thing you know, you try to go back to the gym, you can't even do three push-ups. It's quiet in this whole this house today. Now look, I believe in being fit and working out and all that, but you better be spiritually fit more than physically fit. 
Say amen. amen. So if you're home today, make sure that you don't neglect your soul and neglect the people of God. Be in fellowship in the way that you can. There's, no con there's not an ounce of condemnation in this. I'm not telling you you have to be here in person if you can't be. But I am telling you that you got to reach out and touch someone. Amen. Say amen if it's all right. Now, I feel a little crusty today. I already told you we're going to start delving into a little bit of Christian maturity because I think it's time as Life Church and members of Life Church that some of us come up a little bit. Some of us need to. Some of us need to. Look, I'm, I'm the dad of the house. And sometimes the dad needs to say, we need to come up a little bit. We need to do, do a little bit better. We need to quit wearing our feelings on our sleeves. We need to quit being wishy-washy. Thank you, brother. We need to get signed up and signed on and logged in. Amen. And in it to win it. <laughs> How many are ready to rule today? You're ready to reign from a higher realm. All right, we're, we're reading at verse 28. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them, man, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air. And over the cattle and over all the earth. Everybody say all oh, the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And to every beast of the earth, incidentally, this is where uh, vegetarianism comes in. That was how it was initially. <laughs> and to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And so it was. Disclaimer, I'm not a vegetarian. Then God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. Very, not just good. It was very good. Look at your name and say, we're not just dealing with good today. We're dealing with very good. I'm telling you, Thursday... With just good Thanksgiving, it was very good. Every bite was very good. How many know the difference in good and very good? He said it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them, all the host of heaven and earth were made in the sixth day, and they were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Father, right now I ask for illumination, impartation, and revelation of your word. Let my tongue speak the pen of already writer, and let the hearers hear with humility the engrafted word which is able to save their souls. Let everyone that is challenged in their soul to come up a little bit higher, to mature a little bit, to quit being weak, but to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Let them hear the clarion call from the servant of God today. It doesn't come from me, but it comes from you. Let them hear a word from your throne, a preceding word that changes everything. Let everything become changed and transformed by the renewing of our minds. And bring us from glory to glory, faith to faith, line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little, but here today, let it be very good, just like your work. And we ask it in the mighty and the matchless and the precious name of Jesus and that all of his holy saints say, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. I invite you to take notes today. It's going to be a good day to take notes. I think I'm going to say some things that may be some, some uh, light bulb moments for some of you. And maybe, some, maybe some of you are going to know everything I've said. Well, if the Lord woke me up at 345, you need to listen to it anyway. <laughs> say, Amen. It's all right. Just means you need to hear it again. I have a meditative thought, brings the sermon down to a singular idea. I want us to get this meditative thought today, and I want us to practice this. I want us to practice this meditative thought as you're helping me in the back with the idea that I'm going to maintain this thought, not just this week, 
But this is going to be my new M.O. This is going to be the new me. No more Mr. Nice Guy. No more let the devil run roughshod over me. No more devil ride right inside saddle. No more taking the low when God has called me to have the high. Amen. No more pecking with the chickens when God's called me to soar over the eagles. Amen. 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 So get this and adopt this as a mantra and as an attitude that this is going to be your mindset from now on. I am the image and likeness of the unseen God. Now, this is a mouthful because God is spirit and has no form, right? And this is what the Bible says. And yet it says that God created man in his, in his image and his likeness. In other words, you are what, when the devil sees you, he doesn't see you, he sees Jesus. Right? I'm the image. I am the image. Not just I'm made in the image, but I am the image. Do you see how that ups the ante a little bit more? In other words, I'm not going to look in the mirror and see, see, the, see the dog that nobody invited to the dance. No, see the loser. <laughs> I don't see that when I look in the mirror. I see the image of God. I see the likeness of God. What does that mean? It means that you're supposed to be like him. Now, you made to be like him. How many have been made to be like him? A Ferrari is made to drive 150 miles an hour. But if you have one in Texas, you probably barely get it over 90. Right? And that's how some of us are. We are a sports car sitting up on blocks. Because we don't understand our likeness to God. We don't understand how close we are to who and what God is. The scripture declares, I think in 1 Peter, as he is, so are we in the world. So I have to get this. As he is. Oh, what is he today? He's a provider. He's a supplier. He's a baptizer. He's a lover. He's a friend. This is who he is. And as he is, so am I in the world. It's my meditative thought. I'm going to think about this. As he is, so am I in the world. As he is, so are you, Brother Willie, at Longview Regional. As he is, so are you in that truck. As he is, so are you flying that fake airplane. <laughs> Y'all, inside you. <laughs> As he is, so are you in the school. As he is, so am I in the world. I am blessed to reside in heavenly places. Now, I, I, I've, I've got a nice home. I love where I live. I love Longview, Texas. How many love East Texas? Not everybody lives in Longview. I don't want to put shade on the Diana and the Kilgore folks. But how many love East Texas? It's, it's a heavenly place to me, geographically. I, I love it. It's heaven. When you get to the right place, it's just the right place. Don't you love being there? You feel peace, you feel joy. But I'm going to tell you, you could geographically be in a place that not, isn't any good, and it does not change your spiritual place. You reside in a heavenly place. God says he seated you together in heavenly places. Heavenly places. So it's up to you to reside and abide in this place or not. It's up to you to decide, are you going to be like God, or are you going to be like the devil. You gonna be like God, or you gonna act like your ex-wife or your ex-husband? Oh, Lord, it's quiet. Are we, we get messed up because really our first image of God, the image of God, is our parents, right? And so sometimes we we get messed up in what God and who God is behind our earthly reasoning. That's why He's blessed us. To reside in a heavenly place. To get a new vision. Yeah. And a new place. When you come up a little bit higher, you can see a little bit clearer. Can I get a good witness? Yeah. I am blessed to reside in heavenly places. To rule and reign with Christ. Yeah. Oh, we're joint heirs with Christ today. Do you believe it? Yeah. So can I get you all to say this? And we're going to open this up just a little bit more. As we hit some points about ruling and reigning from a higher realm. I want you to say, I am the image. Let's, I want you to say in East Texas, say, I'm the spitting image and likeness of the unseen God. 
Come on, tell somebody, say, I'm just like him. I can call those things that be not as though they were. I'm just like him. I can love when people don't love me because I'm just like him. I cannot cuss you out on Luke 281 because I'm just like him. Come on, tell somebody, say, I'm just like him. As he is. Come on, I need a little bit more help. If you're at home, I want you to say, as he is. So am I in the world. I am blessed. Oh, I think we need to get a little bit more emphasis on blessed. Maybe if you want to put it in about three syllables like we do in, in the South. I am blessed. To reside in heavenly places. To rule and reign with Christ. Now, God didn't pick you up for you not to do anything. You've got some responsibilities, right? <laughs> How many believe this today? Yeah. Five things that are going to help you in your ruling and reigning from a higher realm. Everybody say five things. Five, five small stones, stones. Yeah. were picked from the creek, uh -huh. from the brook. Right. Yeah. It only took one of them to slay Goliath. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You need to take these five things as five small stones, five small foundations that will bump up and support your reign, your reign, your reign. My wife's been watching The Crown. How many of y'all been watching The Crown on, uh, I guess, Netflix or something? Sorry, baby, you're alone. <laughs> we don't understand all this because we, we have a we have a representative republic. We we vote for people to, to go and, and serve. And then we change them up. We change them over, over and over again. We change them. But in a monarchy, there's a line, a succession. And they understand this thing of reigning and the responsibilities that come with dealing with the kingdom. And so we have to be kingdom-minded and understand that God has called each of us. I always know when I got a good one. I hope the lights don't cut off today because I know I'm not ignorant of his devices. I'm going to mess with them today. I'm going to mess with y'all and I'm going to mess with him. He doesn't like it. When you take your place, I'm going to tell you, he does not like it. But you have, help me. No, I'm good. I'm good. I, I heard it rain. It's good. How many appreciate Travis? Amen. Good. I'll tell you what, they say when the devil got kicked out of heaven, he fell right down in the middle of the sound booth. But it's not Travis, it's just gremlins. <laughs> So we have to understand that we have a responsibility to take in this rule and this reign. It's not just so that we can wear crowns and, and royal robes and walk around with our noses in the air. we got a responsibility and something to do with this reign. Amen. 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 So number one, the first thing to know about it illustrates the first thing that we said is that we are the image, are the image, not just made in the image, but are the image and likeness of God. Amen. It moves it up from I want to be, I aspire to be, I know he created me to be this, I know that I can be, I know that I should be, to I am. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I am. I am. Now look, he revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. Moses said, he said, I want you to go set my people free from Egypt land. You all know the story. Amen. He said, well, I need to know who is sending me. And God said, all you need to know is I am. And he gave himself a name and told him his name was something that you can't even say without also referring to yourself. See, when the enemy looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees God. That's why we say here, you're the only Jesus some will see, the only Bible some will read, and the only church some will ever go to. You have to understand that you are the I am today. Just like my son's last name is Allison. If his name is I am, my name is I am. And whatever you attach to it is also true. 
He said that was his name so he would say he was Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer. And Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. I'm in the room today. And that's why he said, let the weak say, I am strong. Because if you walk around saying you're weak, you're not realizing that you are the image and likeness of God. You have forgotten who you are. Now, God has revealed himself to mankind as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right? We understand this is a doctrinal thing. Father, Son, this is manifestation. And we call people that do what I do the man of God. Brother Kendricks is a man of God. He's ordained. And sometimes we think that it's only me and Brother Kendricks. But every single one of us are of God. We are the children, help me, of God. We are the people, amen. We are of God. We come from God. We have his DNA in us. Put your hand on yourself and say, I come from God. That means if you're a man here today, you are a man of God. We say God has manifested himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but he's also manifesting himself as Treva and, and Mike and Megan Pearl. So why is he Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Because as Father, he's God to us. Look at your name and say he's God to us. As Son, he's God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. How many are glad that God is with you? Amen. And then in Acts 2, he became and is the Holy Spirit, God in us. God wants to work in you, through you, as you. You are the only image of God. He does not have a form. You are his image and his likeness. And as he is, so are you in the world. And so when we say man of God, I want you to think about that a little bit different today. Look at your name and say, think about it a little bit different. Man equals manifestation. Man equals manifestation. So you are the manifestation of God in the earth. God wants to manifest his miracles through you, in you, to you, back as you. I got a little quiet. I know I'm getting, a, I'm getting ahead, I'm getting a little above people, but I'm going to tell you, I'm in the book today. I know what he said. And when you don't see yourself correctly, you won't live correctly. When you don't see yourself as high and lifted up and changed, then you're going to live like you see yourself. So you have to change that. Well, so man equals manifestation. That means that I am the manifestation of God in Longview, Texas. I am the image and likeness of God here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling on this because I know that we've, we've all been told we're created in the image, yes. but we've never been told that we are the image. If you were created in the image, that means you look like God. You are the image. You see what I'm doing with grammar here today? You see what I'm doing? But it, it elevates it a little bit more. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, quit looking at all your flaws. Quit looking at all. Look at yourself and you say, you are a child of God. You are the manifestation of God as he is. So are you to Longview, Texas. So are you to Longview Regional. So are you to wherever you go. You are just like him. You are his likeness. Amen. Amen. Not just supposed to be. Not just should be. Not just can be, you are. Yes, amen. Channel yourself, say, I am. I am. Get the I am today. I am. One more time, say, I am. I am. Say, I'm a man of God. If you're a woman, say, I'm a woman of God. You're a manifestation of God. Oh, it says that male and female, he created them. You came from God. You are of God. You're a manifestation of God. Amen. I realize that we could say, well, you know, I'm not God. He's God. We could say that. There's truth in that. But you're a little piece. Yes. That's why you're called the body of Christ. Yes. Are you getting it today? Yes. And here's the thing. is You have a dual nature. You have a divine nature and you have a fleshly nature. Right. To live after the flesh is death. But to live after the spirit is is life and peace. 
How many pick a life in peace? How many are going to decide to see yourself a little bit different today? I believe it. I believe it. We are the image and likeness of God. Number two, the second thing to know about ruling from a high place is that we have the authority that he gives to us. Now, it says here, it says he created them in his image and in his likeness. He created them. Then it says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. He was very specific. Everybody say, he's specific. He's specific. So that means that you, there are authorities that are specific to you. And the authority that you have that's specific to you didn't come from you, it came from God. Because there is no authority except that be of God. Now, I have authority over Life Church. I don't have to say amen. I don't even need an amen. I know I have authority over Life Church. But I can't run down the First Methodist, run, there, run in there and tell them how to start doing stuff. I don't have authority over First Methodist. Do you all hear me? And we get messed up when we start operating an authority that we don't have. But we get very, very... Uh, in the right place of ruling from a high realm when we operate in the authority that we do have. Yeah. Every one of you parents have authority over your children. Amen. Small children, not, not grown children. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't try this with your grown kids, it won't work. But if you don't use that authority, I promise they're not going to turn out right. right. Discipline doesn't begin in the playpen, or in the state pen, it begins in the playpen. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Amen. And so even then you do everything right, sometimes things just go wrong. Amen. But you have to use your authority while they're under your roof, yeah. right? Amen. So you have specific authorities. You have authority in your job that I can't do. I can't come do what you do. I have no authority to do that, no license to do that, and you better move out of the way if I get in truck because I will run something over. But think about the authorities that God gives you that's specific and tailored to you. They are tied to your gifts. They are tied to who and where you are. They're tied to the, the household of faith that you're a part of. They're tied into how you submit to the authority that God has given you. If you don't submit to authority, you can't be an authority. It's tied to things. So your ruling from a high place is an understanding that you have the authority that God gives. Now I want to tell you three things that God gives to every believer. An authority that God gives to every believer. In other words, I'm going to tell you three things that every single one of you from the oldest to the youngest has as a believer. Just because you're created in the image and in the likeness of God. Somebody say, I am the image. I am the likeness. So the authority that he gives to every believer first and foremost is over yourself. Amen. These people, like, the devil made me do it. No, no. That ain't going to fly with God. No, you are your own devil and you are your own angel. Yes, <laughs> and some of you all are fighting the enemy and it's the enemy, enemy, that's the worst enemy. Amen. It's me. Yes, yes. I fight my own self. Because I don't have the right image and I don't have the right likeness of God. I don't have the right viewpoint of who he's called me to be. And so I have to understand that nobody has authority. No, you can't make me do right. The only one that can make me do right is me. Let me tell husbands and wives something. I know I've joked about this a little bit about wearing your crown and taking your authority. And there is a place for the husband to be the head of the house and the wife should submit and the husband should love. And we, can we just agree that we agree to that? So yeah, yeah. You don't have to say loud amen. You just maybe put one finger up and say, well, I reserve the right or whatever. But it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. As we get into the Christian maternity and I start talking about some, some tenets, maybe I'll, I'll move there. But I want you to know that even though this, there are truths to that, that you can't do anything about that woman, you can't do anything about that man. The only one that can do anything about them is them. Because God gives each one of us authority over ourselves. Put your hand on the top of your head and say, I have authority over me. The second thing he gives you authority over is he gives you authority over the enemy. Every one of you have authority over the devil. Every one of you have authority over every demon. Over every satanic plot 
over every devilish thing that would come against you. You have authority over it. From the youngest to the oldest, I want to teach the five-year-olds to bind the devil. I want to teach the five-year-olds that they got power. That nothing shall by any means hurt them. Because Jesus said all authority. He has all authority. All authority is given unto me. Now I've got some authority I'm going to give out. Behold, I give you power, exousia, authority, to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now look, I've already said you have authority over yourself. How many sometimes just let yourself go wild? Some of y'all did that Thursday. You just let this flesh have its way. Oh my Lord, that's why you're here on Sunday. Saturday sinner and a Sunday and saint. <laughs> well, I'd rather have Sunday saints than Monday and Somebody say amen. amen. So we understand that, that the self can get out there where we're not really ruling and reigning our own emotions, our own fleshly appetites. And so it is with the devil. The devil that's running roughshod over you is because you have not taken authority over that devil. Amen. Whatever that devil is, whatever that enemy is to you, you have to use your authority. Now, look, I can cast the devil out of you. I can cast the devil out of this church, but he's going to come back with seven friends. If you don't walk in the authority that God has given you, can I get a good and a better amen? I know I got authority. Do you know that you have authority over the devil? I don't even like talking about the devil a whole lot in this church. And you all that have been here a while, you know that I don't. Because he ain't no fan. We got the power. In the name of Jesus. Over all the power of the enemy. But today, I want to tell you that whatever the devil is that's come against your life, you have authority over it. The third thing that God gives authority to every believer is authority in heaven and in earth. Amen. Authority in heaven and heavenly realms and in earth. In other words, when I'm saying ruling from a high realm, that gives you authority in the heavens and in the earth. Earth. He said, I'm going to give you keys. Now he's talking to Peter, but put your hand on yourself and say, I'm Peter today. <laughs> Peter was the rock. Yes. Peter was the revelation. When you get the revelation, you get the keys. Turn look at your neighbor and say, the keys come with the revelation. In fact, keys are revelation. Revelation are keys. I like that shape of keys. He said, I'm going to give you keys to the kingdom. And everything you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Everything you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That means everything you stop and you put a stop to in the heavenly realm can operate in the earthly realm. And whenever you say, I'm going to allow this. I'm going to allow the blessing of God. I'm going to allow the rain to fall. I'm going to allow the overflow to come. It has to happen in earth because to every believer, he gets authority over heaven and earth. Amen. Now look, if you're not the supervisor on your job, you're not the boss, don't go into your job tomorrow and take authority <laughs> and fire people that you don't like. Because you only have the authority that he gives. Right? But three things you have. You got authority over yourself. You got authority over the devil. And you got authority in heaven and in earth. Is that good? I'm only on number two. Number three, third thing to know about ruling from a high place, because your neighbor said, I'm about to be crowned, is that the realm comes with blessing. So God had never asked you to do anything without blessing you for doing it. God doesn't ever extract anything from you without giving way more back to you. Amen. And it may seem like for a moment that you've been humbled, but he said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. For in due season, he's going to exalt you. He gives grace yeah. to the humble. Every blessing comes with seeking the kingdom of God Amen. first. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. Is the same might be added? Does it say that you might be okay? 
You might be all right in business if you if you seek first the kingdom. It says all these things shall be, shall be. It's emphatic. It's prophetic. It's a promise. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm going to lay hold of the promises of God that are yes and in him. Amen to me. I'm going to get something about myself that says I know that God's got a blessing for me. And as good as God has been up to now, I believe that we have not seen anything yet. He saves the best for last. How do I know? He said, your latter shall be greater than your former. He's got former rains and latter rains, and the latter is better than the former. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm moving on up. And so the Bible says that you're going to be blessed. You can't leave houses and lands and families without being blessed a hundredfold in this life. In this life. So we got a whole realm of Christianity to think by and by when the morning comes and all the saints of our God will be gathered home. We'll tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by now. But down here we're tempted and tried. We're all made to wonder. I am weak with Everybody will be happy. Not going to be happy down here. But over there, some glad morning, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye-bye. <laughs> I, you look, I know we're all going to die, and I know we're going to heaven, and I know it's all bills paid, and I know it's wonderful, and I know it's a transition of life, and I know the pearly gates and mansions and a sea of glass and a throne. I know that. I know that we're going to worship and live in the hereafter forever and ever, and it's going to be wonderful. But I need God to break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar right now. I don't need all bills paid when I get there. I need my bills paid right now. I need God's blessing right now. I'm not going to need it when I get there. I'm going to already have it when I get there. <laughs> when I say I'm the image and the likeness of God, I should not be walking around broke, busted, and disgusted, can't be trusted. When my bottom lips so low, low I can scoop up some dirt. I always reflect the blessing and the power and the majesty of God. I'm ruling from a high place and the blessing comes with it. Oh, touch three people right around you. If you're going to reach them and say, you are going to be blessed. When you accept the crown, you're going to be blessed. A blessing is coming your way. The realm comes with a blessing. I'm going to tell you that there are crown jewels. There is riches. There's, there's, you, don't, you don't see the Queen of England. Showing up, showing up in our house shoes and hair curlers. <laughs> My daughter's working today, or I guess sleeping from working last night. And when she was in high school, she wanted to take a trip with the, with the school to England. Well, Daddy Mama had a hard time with her going across the pond, as they say, without one of us. So I went with her. I went with the group. I was at one of the... Uh, uh, chaperones, thank you. And uh, the highlight, the highlight of that tour, and the tour guide told us, he said he's only he'd only seen the queen one time. He's all his life. He's probably in his forties. Only seen her one time. Well, we understand that. I mean, how many of you have ever seen a living president? Anybody? <laughs> you seen dead presidents? I've seen dead, dead presidents on my money. <laughs> so we understand that. And, and so, so in England, when we were there, he said, there's a chance. The queen has got to go to church. Oh, look at your neighbor. Say, you need to go. If the queen needed to go to church, you need to go to church. And she had to go to church. And I don't, I don't know. We're doing something at the church house. And they said, we're going to stand right here. And it might be, maybe, that she'll pass by. So we had our spot, just looking. And probably about 20 minutes, here comes a Rolls Royce. Because the realm comes with blessings. Do y'all hear me? 
And in the back is this little old woman with a little old hat on her head. And there's the Queen of England from me to Atley. There she is. There's a car window in, in between us. But I see her and I see the prince and I see, um, I want to say the, the prince is, uh, you know, you know, uh, Kamala, Camilla, Camilla, whatever. We got to see those people in Rolls Royces because around comes with blessings. It comes with blessings. So, look, you say, well, I don't even want a Rolls Royce. Well, God give you what you want. If you want a Pinto that you have to push to get started, they don't, even, they don't make them anymore. <laughs> Seats all cracked. Steer wheel's broken. You got to shove it in the gear. <laughs> if you want that, they exist. So they said, well, you know, all this prosperity stuff, you know, is, is all, you know, selfishly motivated. And I can see where people can be that way. And that gets to back to where I started. Christian maturity is not all about you. The best thing you can do for a poor person is not be one of them. You can't help somebody when you haven't been helped. You can't give somebody when you ain't got. So if God wants to bless you. Open up your heart and let God bless you. There could be somebody here that God wants to make a millionaire, but you've closed yourself off because you say that's too much. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below a little silver and a little. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> well, if you're satisfied with it, that's what you can have. And God blessed you in your cottage. There is something really wonderful about having exactly the right thing for you. In fact, I think it was the psalmist wrote, somebody wrote in the Psalms, feed me with bread that is sufficient for me. Not so much that I forget you. And not so little that I curse you. There's something that's just right for you. And it's the blessing of God for your life. Put your hand on top of your head again and say, Lord... Bless me. The realm comes with the blessing. Number four, move it quick. Are you getting something today? Are you ruling from a high point? Are you already taking your crown? You got your crown on? Yeah, some of y'all need shiny. Help me out, brother, in the back. Number four. We have a mandate for dominion. We have a mandate for dominion. Now, dominion means that you have rule over your domain. When we talk about kingdom, we're talking about a king's domain. The king that doesn't have dominion in his domain is about to be deposed, is about to be thrown out, is about to be replaced. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't get my job. In fact, Revelation says, take heed that no man steal your crown. You got to wear your own crown. You got to put your crown on, straighten it on your head, and say, I'm going to take my place in God because there is a mandate for dominion on me. And so I love what God told Adam and Eve. It's on the sixth day. Six is the number of man. And on the sixth day, it says, He created man in his own image, and in the image of God, He created them. Look at your neighbor and say, I am the image. Male and female, he created them. Then he blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Have dominion. Now he's talking about over the fish, over the birds, over every living thing that move, moves. See, and then that's when he goes into the, the, the uh, vegetarian diet for all of us. Some of y'all need to go have a salad today just because he said he made, made every herb for you. <laughs> have dominion. He said, subdue the earth. That tells me that there's going to be times when things rise up against you that you're going to have to put down. There's going to be things that rise up and come against you that you're going to have to say, oh no, not today, Satan. 
There's going to be some times you're going to have to wag your finger and work your neck and say, not today. It's not going to happen on my watch. I rule and I reign and I say no to the devil and yes to God because I have a mandate for dominion. And if you don't take your place and take your dominion, somebody else is going to steal your crown and take it for you. Amen. Might be a drug. Might be alcohol. Could be illicit something, whatever. You're way out there. Taking dominion over you. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Yeah. And then he said it again, all things are lawful for me. Why? Because I have dominion in my domain. Amen. But I will not be brought under the power of any. Yeah. That's the key. you got to break chains today. You gotta say no, 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 no. I mean, you gotta get something about you that says no, devil. You have come far enough. I'm gonna tell you back to the place where you have authority, where God gives you authority. You have authority over your children. You can pray the prayer over your children. You are not going to touch this one in the name of Jesus. Get a prayer cloth, stick it in their pillow. Start crying out. Push a few meals back. Say in the name of Jesus until they come to a saving knowledge till they're filled with the Spirit. I'm going to believe that I have dominion and authority over this. I have a mandate for dominion at least and more so. I, I it's more of an East Texas region. But God planted us in South Longview. And I won't rest until South Longview comes back up. It's been down long enough. People have been poor, broke. People have been on drugs. There have been too many deadbeat dads and messed up moms and people going to jail in South Longview. It's happened long enough. God didn't put us here for us not to make a change. Do y'all hear me? And so I have a mandate for dominion. I will see something extraordinary. I will see God move. I will see this place fill wall, 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 people. Why? It's a promise on the inside that God has said, you have a mandate for dominion. Whatever realm you have authority in, yes, it's, up to you, it's up to you to subdue that earth. Yes. Yes. Because I will tell you, just like your child will challenge you, clean your room. Either they're sneaky about it, go in the room and don't do a thing, or they're defiant, make me clean my room. Look, this is just an example. An example. Don't, don't go home and whoop your kids. <laughs> Unless they really need it. <laughs> it used to be in a church where a lady would come to church with her grandkids. And she had a switch with her. And she'd get really kicked up in the service. She'd say, hey, man, preacher, brother. She said, bring it on home. She said, bring it on home, baby. She'd tell the preacher. But the more she kicked up she got in that service, the more she'd hit her kids with the switch. Hey, man, say it. <laughs> she was subduing the earth. Taking her mandate for dominion. But I'll tell you, a child that you don't whoop with, maybe whooping you. So I'm just going to tell you, in the way that you can, in the way that you should, in the authority that God has given you, there is a mandate for dominion over your life. He did not call you as a second-class citizen. There are no second-class citizens in the kingdom of God. Amen. We are all royalty. Amen. We're all priesthood. He's the king of kings. That's, look at your neighbor, so that's me. He's the Lord of lords, so that's me. You're royalty. You have a place of rule in the kingdom from a higher realm. But your mandate is for dominion. Now, I got one more. If it's all right, we say Amen. Number five, the fifth thing to know about ruling from a higher realm, our higher realm, is as the screen is changing. Ruling brings us to rest. Ruling brings us to rest. Now, I've said all this and I've expended a lot of energy 
really preaching about. Hey, you're the likeness of God. It comes with a blessing. I'm really excited about that. And it sounds like it's so much to do. Lord, can I even do it? And sometimes the task of ruling from a higher realm can be so overwhelming that we'll sit down on the low place and let someone steal our crown. We'll let someone do what God has called us to do. Or we'll get a jealous spirit in us about somebody else ruling and reigning and having dominion and wondering why we're not doing it. When God has called us all to do it. Their light shining bright is not stopping you from shining your light. What would happen if we all put our lights on high beam? What would happen if we all rose to the grace and the fruition and the blessed, blessed place, the, the, the fullness of our gifts all coming? If we all operated in the gift, I'm not talking about you operating in my gift and my, me operating in yours. I'm talking about the authority that he gives to us personally. If we all begin to let our light shine, you know, I, I'm going to say this because I already told you we're going to be focusing on some Christian maturity. Um, founding a church has been the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. The most difficult. And then, well, I've done a lot of stuff and I'm going to, you know, we sit down and talk. I can tell you about my careers. I've liked almost every job I've had and feel like I do it pretty good. Just because I try. There's, there's a reward for trying, right? But part of the reason why founding a church is hard is because you end up having to do so much of the work yourself. Uh, when we first started, and this is, this is not a pat me on the back, and this is not a, I'm not playing a sad song or a and I promise. I just, I want, I want to make you understand something. First started the church, we, we didn't have lawn service, so Becky would put a push lawnmower in the front seat of a Toyota Tercel. <laughs> He'd come up and mow two acres with a push mower. Never mind just cleaning the church and all, too. We both worked jobs, you know, to get this thing off the ground. And what's making it easier now, and what would make it even a lot easier, even more so, is if more of you all would rise to Christian maturity and say, I'm going to take my place yes. in the kingdom of God, and I'm going to do what I can. I'm not asking anybody to do what they're not gifted to do. I'm not asking anybody to do what they can't do, but I'm asking everybody to do what they can do and do it well. And do it with excellence as to the Lord and not unto man. Amen. If I can count on you one day, but I can't count on you the next day, then I really can't count on you. Oh, I, look, I, I just threw up. I knew I threw a bucket of water all over you. I'm sorry. But I have to say this because this is what I'm talking about. Me letting my light shine bright should not prevent you from letting your light shine bright. We all need our lights on high beam. We all need to be doing what God has called us to do. It's not going to get done unless we do it as he is, so are we in the world. You're waiting on God and God is waiting on you. What are you waiting for? Get up, be, and do, and operate in who God has called you to be, the likeness and the image of God. And that doesn't bring you to a place of being tired. I might say this is the hardest thing, but I am no ways tired. I'm just getting going. Do you all hear me? I'm not tired behind this. I live to get up here on Sunday mornings. So I can't wait to get here. I can't wait to let God see what God is going to do. I wish everyone lived for this moment of stepping into the place where God is using you in the way that he wants to. And then when you do that, you don't rule from a place of exhaustion and tired out. When everybody's lights are all bright, we don't have to worry about darkness. When everybody shines and shows up, it's not too much on the pastor or the pastor's wife or the leaders of the church. It's going to take everybody. So God said everything he did, everything he created, man was the crown of creation. He, he absolutely outdid himself when he did man because of this one thing. He created all the animals, but he created man in his image. 
and in his likeness. And it was the sixth day, and he said, it was very good. It was so good, Brother Travis, that God, who neither sleeps nor slumbers, who does not even need any rest, who never gets tired, who does not nod off, I wish somebody would help me in the round, who doesn't sleep while you are wondering where he is. This God who his eyes are always over the righteous said, everything I created was so very good. I'm going to take a day off. And I'm going to rest. And it says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. So what am I telling you? You might have to do, make some changes in your life to get your crown straight. To get in your place where you see yourself as the image and likeness of God. To see yourself blessed. Look at your neighbor saying you need to see yourself as blessed. Quit seeing yourself as cursed. See yourself as blessed. Amen. And Get to the place where you're make, you're doing the work to get get look at your neighbor say, I'm doing the work to get there. I'm operating in the authority that he gives. I'm not I'm not superimposing myself into an authority that I don't have, but I'm not shirking away from the authority that I do have. Y'all see the difference? Don't don't go somewhere and act like you're the authority and the boss when you're not. But don't sit up and not be the boss when you are. I'll take a better amen on that. Amen. So there might be a little work behind that. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the sixth day. I'm still getting there. I'm still, I'm, I'm finding my crown. I'm finding my place. Do y'all hear me? Even in this church, sometimes I feel like we're in the sixth day. We're in the sixth day. We are working, but it is very good. It's not just a little bit good. It is very good. I want to tell you the worship today wasn't just good. It wasn't just all right. It was very good. I want to tell you about this sermon today. Maybe not the preacher, but the sermon is not just all right. It's not just all right. Do. No, this sermon is very good. This sermon will change your life. It's very good. But we're in the sixth day. And we have a mandate for dominion. So sometimes that means I'm swatting down some things and I'm propping some things up because I'm taking dominion over my domain. So I've got a little something to do. But it doesn't have to stay in that place. Because when you get your kingdom straight, you can rest a while. And you can do just like God. Everything he created all the vegetarians. Even the animals were vegetarians. Y'all think I'm preaching all vegetarians, but I'm really not. <laughs> I'm really not. But he created this system to where, and I want you all to get this, to wear your crown in the high place. You don't have to be a carnivore. You don't have to devour one another. You don't have to put somebody else down to get up in your spot. There's a spot that's just for you. There's a cleft in the rock that's got your name on it. There's a high place in God that was only designated for you. And in that place, just like Moses, you will meet God. And when you get your kingdom straight, we see that in King David. He had to get his kingdom straight, right? But when you get it straight, then you can rest. Yeah. Ruling brings you to rest. When you're, when, you're, when you're being ruled over, you'll never rest. When you're being ruled over, it'll be a, go do this, go do that. Someone else is calling the shots. But when you get into the driver's seat, you get to dictate where the vehicle goes. Yeah. How am I going somewhere good? Yeah. Oh, Travis, just give me some salt piano. I want you to just, right now, uh, we're going to have a coronation ceremony in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care where you came from. I don't care who your folks were. I don't care how bad you think you've been. God went into the booth and voted for you. And he's got a, play, a, a, a special place, a special realm for, for you to rule from. 
It's all yours. But you got to accept your crown. You got to, to allow the royal scepter to come down on you. Amen. Can I invite everyone to stand? Sometimes I just stop for a second to hear the Lord. And I feel today it's imperative and important that we take a step forward. So I know some of you are social distancing. If you, if you need to do that, be a little bit back. But I still want you to make the physical step of coming forward. I want everybody that can to come around the front. And if you can't come all the way down, at least come some, some ways up. Just to honor God in his word. Say, I'm answering the call. I'm answering the call to get my crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being crowned king or queen is not a prideful event. It's an humbling event. Because God is going to give you an authority and a domain that's not about you. It's about others. It's what he wants to do for others. But he can't and won't give you the crown if you don't want it. If you won't wear it. It just won't come. So right now, if you will, if you will, if you're, if you're willing to wear the crown, I want you to just lift one hand to the Lord and say, God, I surrender and I receive my crown. And I ask you, Lord, to show me how to be the ruler you've called me to be. Show me where to take authority. Show me how to reign over myself, my emotions, my feelings, my appetites. Show me how to take authority in heaven and earth. Show me how, Lord, me how. to rule over my enemy, over my enemy. And, to and to never allow him to have a foothold in me. I receive my crown. I rule and reign now with you. And I thank you, Lord, for your blessing that comes with the reign. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you feel like you got something today? Yeah. Hallelujah. I deliver my soul in that word. It could be that somebody else has a need. Whatever need may be represented here today, I want to tell you that God, is it Kevin? Kevin, God's got a blessing for you today. I want you to just receive it. He's got a life change for you. He's got a mind change for you. He's got a transition for you. He's got something different for you. Where you've been and where you resided in consciousness and where you resided in thought, God says that's, that's been elevated and changed today and the way it has been is not the way that it's going to be. That you should look for changes. Look for changes even tomorrow and, and through this week. Look for changes that are going to come in your life and when you see the changes that come, it's God confirming his word to you that not just that is changing but everything is going to change for you. Everything is going to change for you. Everything. Everything. Look at this part and put your hand forward and say, everything changes in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Release that word to you. Father, we thank you today. If you have a need today, I just speak of the meaning of the needs. Oh, as you've got your crown on today, you can just go into the storehouse. You can just go into the store. You got so many you got crown jewels. You got crown jewels. You just need to take some of those crown jewels to the pawn shop and say, Lord, I thank you that I have everything that I need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank you for being at Life Church today. Be blessed. Amen. Amen.